Welcome back, guys. Uh, so we're here again. Uh, we're at the Jump Higher series. We got special guest Josh. Yo. So today we're gonna go over uh, bar position approaching takeoff and body position approaching takeoff. So we'll start off with the first question from from the kite picks from Instagram. When super overpowered, do you one hold your line and pop, or two hop slash ride a little downwind before you pop? Uh, it's generally better to try try hold that edge. Yeah, I think sometimes if you if you release off your edge a little bit and go a little bit downwind, especially when you're really overpowered, you can almost get you build up more power by doing that yeah. a lot of times, and all of a sudden you're like, Ugh, and then you totally lose your edge, and then everything kind of falls apart. So yeah, and if you are gonna bear downwind, do it in a smaller adjustment as opposed to like one quick movement before popping. Like if you find that you can't hold that upwind angle, bear off just a little bit, but don't do it just before pop. And I think a note too within maintaining that edge is maintaining your course too. So if you're eyeing up that spot where you're gonna pop off, especially in, in the waves and stuff, keep keep your eye in the, in the direction that you're gonna go because it's gonna continue in that path. As soon as you take your eye off of there, you're gonna kind of unintentionally start to drift your body in the, in the wrong direction. Uh, for me especially, it's a big thing. Like if I see a kicker coming, I, my focus is literally locked onto that. I sometimes even lose track of other riders because I'm so focused on on that kicker that I, I'm gonna make sure I'm lined up perfectly for it. Really what you want to rely on your kite flying to really kind of to, to be that change in, in power. Ideally, you know, a little sheeting in and out and bar could, should be able to for kind sure. of get it I down. mean generally when you're lining up, you're not gonna be lining up with your bar fully in. You wanna get that bar out a little bit and then on your takeoff you wanna be sheeting in so that you can load up with the power. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a big common mistake that we wanted to talk about is oversheating. Um, a lot of people try to come in to take off with the bar fully sheeted in already, and that's just going to pull you downwind. And it's also not really going to allow the kite to do the amount of work it needs to do. So if you send the kite fully sheeted in, you have nowhere to go from there. Whereas if you send it sheeted out, and as soon as you leave the water, then you sheet in, you get that extra boost upwards. A good way to think about what's happening with the kite there is if you've ever been in light conditions, you pull the bar in all the way, you're oversheating, the kind of the, the kite can backstall out of the sky, right? If your bar is pulled in more, the kite's gonna wanna sit in front of you more. Yeah. If you've noticed as that happens, if you backstall the kite, sheet the bar out, the kite's gonna pop back up to your neutral zone. So if you kind of just keep that in mind for when you're out there and you're going to hit a jump, if, you're, if your bar's fully in more and you go off, off the kicker or just off flat water, it's gonna pull you forward more. So you wanna have that bar further yeah. out so that the kite shoots above you, but as you've done that, you've maintained really good power and that happens close to the end of that. So send the kite with the bar goes out, kite goes overhead, ton of power, pop off the water, and then you pull in. I get that because generally if your kite is more in front of you on takeoff, those jumps don't generally go that high. You find when your kite's more directly above your head, you, you tend to get a lot more lift. Yeah, and if you think about the back lines attached to the wingtips, if you shorten those back lines, the kite's going to come down in front of you. So cheating in is simply just shortening those back lines. You want to keep them as long as possible so the kite gets overhead, and then you can cheat in once you're up in the air. All right, so we got another question from uh, Nale, if I'm saying that right. The question is, do I just lean backwards, or do I have to lean backwards down? At what time do I have to do this? Well, I think if we're just talking approaching takeoff, you don't really want to be moving your body that much at all. But backwards or backwards down, you want to just be holding that edge as much as possible. And then when it comes to the actual pop, it's more about turning your board up wind and really digging in yeah. that back heel. I mean, if you're also riding in super overpowered conditions, you're going to be leaning back quite a lot so that you can hold your edge. If you're too upright, you're, gonna, you're not going to be able to get that edge in properly and get, get like a good takeoff. I don't know if the backwards down means lowering your butt, um, generally not going to help too much. You want to, I mean it does lower your sense of gravity, but again you want to be leaning into your harness and not really down there. You want to sort of take the pressure in the harness and then, like we are saying, get that edge upwind which will allow you, allow you to get a good jump. Yeah, I mean, if you stick your butt out and drop that down, what it's going to do is it's going to pull your harness up even more, yeah. and it's going to make it so that you can't shoot out as much, so it's going to be much harder to ride in overpowered conditions. Whereas if you really get your harness in the small of your back and lean back into it, then you have much more room to shoot out. I think you also have a lot more control at the same time. Yeah, yeah I think shoulders back, butt in, so like hips forward and hips turned a little bit towards the direction that you're going, and also just a really solid tight core, because that's the only thing that's going to hold. And your core yeah. is super strong, and your legs are super strong, and what you want to do is you want to take the power in your legs and not have that get lost throughout the movement. So by tightening up your core, you can support your entire harness with your legs. 
if you're going to ride super overpowered, sometimes pushing into your edge is not going to cut it because you're holding power that's more than what you can actually even handle. And generally, like powered wins, again, it's it's coming coming back to leaning back into that harness, getting your your weight a little bit further back and into your heels, which will allow you to to stick your edge in a little bit more. Um, but I, I discovered this weekend some guys put a centre fill in their board, like <laughs> in the middle. Who uh, would do that? Yeah, I think uh, I saw it in this video we got too. I don't know. Apparently, it gives you a better edge. So there was another one here though from U Ubidibo. Ubidibo. <laughs> it's definitely out. Uh, Tebow from Tebow. What direction should you ride when you start the jump? Upwind is more easy for me to get tension on the lines, but it's more difficult to pop. I think like a good little exercise to do for yourself is if you're out on the water and just kind of cruising along in relatively flat water, like bear off downwind and, and cheat the bar in a bit, and you'll notice how you can kind of you can maintain speed, um, and, and the kite's not going to drop out of the sky. Whereas if you sheet it out on the bar while doing that, the kite's going to kind of lose power. Um, so then vice versa, as you're going up wind, try pulling in on the bar all the way, and you'll see how you're way less efficient. And so then try going up wind really hard and pushing the bar out. Um, so I think if you kind of do those things and really understand the, the difference, your bar position and what that's doing to the kite, it could help kind of understand to what angle you need to hit uh, to go towards the jump in order to maintain the appropriate power. Yeah, I think a lot of it is maximizing board speed too and finding like that yeah. optimal angle. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're gonna, if you go straight up wind, you're gonna go really slow, you're gonna have a lot of tension on the lines. If you go straight downwind, you're probably gonna go really fast, but you're not gonna have much line tension. So mm -hmm. I think it's finding that balance of keeping the kite yeah. really powered, lots of tension in the lines, but also a healthy amount of board speed because you need a decent amount of speed in order to be able to boost high. I think that comes back to if, as you're edging up wind, remember to let, like let the, let the kite breathe a bit, sheet the bar out. Um, as long as so you're sheeting the bar out kind of pretty progressively and as you're doing that you're st you still have quite a bit of tension in there in those lines um, but it's, it's, it's allowing the kite to breathe a bit, have a little bit of deep power and allow you to still maintain your edge. As you go upwind, bar out, off the water, pull back in. Yeah I mean especially in flat water you'll notice there's that moment where when you sheet it out and you're sending the kite it breathes for just a second and that's long enough for you to get that extra upwind angle to really pop if you try to do that while sheeted in or without sending the kite it's just going to pull you off your edge but you have that brief moment as the kite's rising to pop and then you release the edge sheet in and you get all your power back as well as letting that kite breathe it's going to get your kite slightly higher up into the window so without letting that kite take that little breath it's not like if you send it without doing that you end up with your kite more in front of you which again is not going to give you a high jump so we wrapped up today with uh, bar positioning and body positioning approaching takeoff um, takeoff in itself was mixed in here we'll probably mix it in with the next episode and also talk about um, bar position and body positioning while airborne see you next time